Thank you, everyone. Uh, it's always a challenge uh, to address a conference like this where I come in as a capacity of a tertiary service provider. But I believe uh, it's, it's very, very important that uh, cash follows the metal wherever it goes. In our country, metal is the cash. Um, secondly, uh, being part of Aditya Bulla Group, which is primarily a uh, non-ferrous alloys revenue model, it's very, very important for a service industry like us to partner with an industry like this. So it's a great honor, uh, Mararia ji, to sort of be part of this, this conference and, and to address an August crowd like yourselves. Uh, little bit about the group. Of course, our non-ferrous credentials are known, and uh, Mr. Pai has uh, sort of made enough uh, sort of comments and uh, clarifications on that. Uh, it is equally important for uh, this August audience to know that uh, we are not very far behind in financing this industry. So as a representative of Aditya Birla Financial Services Group, I am very, very proud to inform you that we offer entire set of support when it comes to financing metal is concerned. So we have an insurance arm that takes care of the general insurance. We have an insurance trading arm or broking arm that takes care of the logistic insurance. And I represent the NBFC, which actually finances all the, the entire ecosystem of uh, non-ferrous. And there, sir, there is no difference of opinion on uh, primary, secondary, or downstream. We finance everybody alike. You uh, money both ways. Yes, <laughs> yes. Right. Uh, so uh, that's the so within the group that is a very very unique entity or a preposition that we present uh, to this conference. Uh, we sort of uh, from from the metal side to the logistics side to the tertiary services side, we can cater to almost all requirement that the industry has. Uh, it's very very important to look at this industry completely from banking perspective or finance perspective. Let us examine uh, what has changed in last 50 to 60 years in this industry. And I, to that extent, I agree with uh, Mr. Pai that not too much has changed. There were always importers, there were always refiners or downstream producers, there were traders, there were intermediaries, and there were consumers. From banking perspective, we had a strategy for almost all constituents of this industry. For downstream producers, we had capex facilities. For traders, we had trade facilities. And for consumers, we had working capital facilities. So a 20,000 feet view from a banker is that nothing has changed. Yes, what can change from now on is what is really, really interesting and that is, that is something that we need to deal with in this conference. So whenever we talk about innovation, whenever we talk about discovery, reference to China becomes inevitable. And in this particular case, it's most definitely inevitable. Recently, Aditya Birla Finance tied up with Alibaba. And I had the privilege to meet the man himself when we, in the connection of this tie up. And what we realized is that metal industry and non-ferrous and ferrous alike has actually come to terms with the fact that their cheese has moved. The conventional way of trading in metal, the conventional way of buying and selling metal has moved away from physical to web-based, from physical to digital. So that's where, sir, your reference to e-metal comes in. The metals are now being traded without even touching the metals. And that's where the transformation both in metals and in banking industry needs to take place. It has already taken place in China. There are 22,000 listed constituents 
on Alibaba who are trading metals or metal parts almost on a daily basis. And there are series of banks in China who finance these trades with a primary or secondary or tertiary on a day-to-day -day basis. Sir, I'm sorry, are you talking uh, uh, futures or physical? I'm talking both. Okay. I'm talking both. In Alibaba, it is not future, it is physical. Right? So, the metal exchange that we are trying to promote here needs to do the same thing in India. And as non-ferrous alloy provider, I think it is our responsibility to be part of that initiative. What is it completely from a banker's perspective that we are looking at? So I was just jotting down a few points and I would like to share them with you. That we are looking at a platform, a platform that can act as an exchange, a platform that can act as an exchange of commodity and cash a platform that can guarantee or provide a credibility to this entire trade which actually takes place in geographically difficult corners of this world and a banker cannot reach there. With this platform, I can see a complete fairness, a complete transparency between who the buyer is, who the seller is and what is being traded. And that as a banker or as a finance provider is very, very important for me. What we also need is transparency. We need to know the quality, the assurance on the quality. We also need to know the logistic support that is happening for this particular trade before we put our money into it. So before banking and finance comes into this trade, these are the basic prerequisites which somebody has to put and provide and put together. That is exactly where an exchange like this can play a very, very vital and dominant role. So we look forward to such exchanges. We look forward to such creation of marketplaces, whether it can be B2B or B2C, where such transparency can be restored. And as a banker, I and my other colleagues can come and finance this. How do we finance the trade? For us, actually, a platform like this does not matter. What really matters to us are three Cs. And this is what I talk about in every banking conference and in this conference as well. As well. These threes are customer, who are the counterparties? What is the credibility of these counterparties? That is very, very important for us. If we have a marketplace which is transparent and fair, it will be quite apparent. We, we can deal with immediately on issues like anti-money laundering, EKYC, who my borrower is and who my counterparty is without having to go through tons of documentation. It can be done on the same platform. Second C for me is collateral. Normally, in conventional sense, the smallest of the entity in the metal trade today does not or cannot offer that metal to me as collateral, although there is a value attached to it. The reason why that is not being done is because we don't have efficient logistics system to create a collateral charge on these metals. Today, these metals are lying in godowns, in warehouses, which are not registered, which does not have proper facilities. They are being transported through unregistered vehicles or logistic partners who do not have, who, who have not corporatized themselves. And therefore for us as bankers to take a call on such entities become very, very difficult. But just as we've seen transformation in agro commodities, where we are now able to finance trades, which are paper, but backed by very, very efficient logistic partners like warehouse providers and transportation providers, if we can bring in those seas, those worlds of change in the metal industry, offering finance to legitimate trades will become that much easier. And the last C is of course cash. And cash will definitely follow the client and the collateral. The question is, can we transform collateral from a piece of land 
commercial property or somebody's residence to the collateral as a metal itself. And that is the challenge that we all today have to agree and address. Sooner we address it, better it will be. So I would like to tell my colleague, Mr. Pai, that in future, I see the local companies, local players being able to access these trades at prices quite close to our Chinese and European counterparts if all these transformations that I'm talking about can take place over a period of time. And the only way we can do it is we all agree to adopt these practices and inform our friends in the government that these needs to be brought about as soon as possible, if possible tomorrow. Our partnership with Alibaba and with Flipkart and with Snapdeal and hopefully next with Amazon, the reason why it is working out is not because we are the most innovative finance partners. The reason why it is working out is because all these platforms, all these digital transformers is what we like to call them, have been able to provide the banking industry what it has been asking for almost decades now. Bankers cannot be innovative beyond a certain extent. The reason, why the, the reason why they can't be innovative is because the basic concern on their exposure needs to be addressed first. You address that physically, you address, address that digitally, or you address that through any other means is up to you. But the moment you address it, it becomes very, very simple, fair, and relatively inexpensive. These entities have been able to put together a buyer, a seller, and the commodity, and the transparency on a platform for us. And for, for that, we are able to give them the best of the market practices and the best of the prices. Let me give you an example. A simple iPhone dealer today has five different ways of funding the inventory that he has. The most difficult way to to finance that, in the, finance that inventory is by mortgaging his or her house and take money against that, which will cost 18% per annum from the local money lender. Now let us move on to, to the last spectrum. All these vendors who are selling their iPhones on Alibaba, on Snapdeal, on Flipkart, we are able to make these loans available to them at 10.5%. The difference or the, the transition between 18% to 10.5%, the reason why it has come is because of this transparency, because of the creation of this marketplace, because of fair visibility on who the buyer is, who the seller is, and where the cash is coming. So I would end this conversation by urging all of you, including ourselves, to create and promote a platform, whether digital or physical or any other which suits us, which promotes the transparency, the fairness, and the logistics part of this trade as soon as possible. Thank you very much.